Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. In this video, um, I'm gonna start this uh, creations of a setup in Sketchup um, that enables us to generate kind of a procedural texture. Uh, basically, um, the idea is to generate like maybe like a grid, uh, maybe hundred by hundred grid or maybe ten thousand by ten thousand grid. It's up to you. But we're gonna start small, maybe hundred by hundred or maybe smaller. Um, number, but the idea is uh, to have some kind of um, a better understanding of uh, like a data structure, whether it is as a grid or as a as a data that's kind of being laid out in the in the two D space or three D space, and then you can kind of manipulate on top of it. So this is something that um, was inspired by this uh, UV grid the other day. I look at this and then I saw it. Um, there is one UV grid in particular kind of interesting for me like uh, like this guy for example how do you create this UV grid using uh, numbers like numerically how do you do that is it do you blend the red and green and blue or this is like a this looks like a color wheel right HSV um, and there's there's also one that's kind of like spiraling like this that's a uh, quite unusual and there's a lot of different variations of uh, grid, uh, UV grid, and I like UV grid because it's just uh, you know it's simple, kind of like a square, and you can divide the colors. And <clears throat> ten by ten means you have like one hundred grids, and with grids and uh, you have a value that's kind of uh, ranging from one to another, and it's kind of nicely laid out. You can learn quite a lot actually. This is something that um something that I've been trying to learn um, there's a lot inspirations like uh, Iniko Quiles I think that's his name um, since I at some point I was uh, studying a little bit about OSL the open shading language the shading writing using code um, there's also this guy uh, Inigo Quiles um, he's a genius that mm, he has a website called Shader Toy, and then basically um, giving you a lot of examples how you would generate all these kind of uh, complex uh, numbers and stuff. There's also a website like um, Shading Open Shading Books, I think that's what it's called, Open Shading Books, and there's also a website called uh, Funza. Um, open Shading. It's not open shading language, uh, shader book, maybe the book of shaders. That's the one. Uh, yeah, basically, it's, it's the way how you would think of designing um, texture or generating kind of a uh, let's let me pick one like a uh, random numbers or all kind of algorithm like a recipe that you can use to generate. Um, all kind of graphics and visual um, it's a complex stuff and then really wide and this is something that's I'm also still learning over time um, but we're gonna start simply in Sprechalk I actually started this thread in Sprechalk um, at Sprechalk github um, I'm just gonna pause my experiment so far but I'm trying to also Kind of thinking how we could uh, generate this pattern and make sense of it you know make sense of it is the most important part um, hopefully I got some help from uh, stretch of developer as well um, yeah like like this for example Lee Linus actually gave the answer to how to generate this uh, UV grid but I kind of started to get something, even though it's still basic, but I think I'm getting into something interesting. So this is uh, not an example in Sprechalk where I'm using the, the fractal noise to generate the pattern. But using the fractal noise is really kind of a, how can I say, like a, a little bit of cheat because the fractal noise itself already kind of doing the hard job inside. So vector fractal is kind of notes that um, procedurally generate this pattern you will see that um, you can also make your own using script node you can 
using all the nodes available in Spiritual uh, or yeah whatever maybe one day we're gonna cover OSL in cycles but before that we're gonna do this uh, using Spiritual so I'm gonna quit Blender and then restart from scratch first of all I'm going to revise um, an older tutorial I'm just gonna make a grid the grids should be made of squares and then the grid itself whether it's 100 gr uh, 100 squares or 1000 squ uh, 1000 square it's it's going to be a single object so it's not like a multiple objects we know that um using animation nodes you can you can have like a single square and then you make an instance of square into a grid and then you colorize the grid um you know, on the object level that's a uh, pretty handy but after 10,000 objects it will start to stutter in Spreadshop, I will do it using more like a like a deeper like on the component level where we're gonna generate the polygon on the fly. Um, each square is gonna represent pixels, of course. So this is Spreadshop grid creation. Um, this is gonna make sense uh, very very soon. So we're gonna work in cycles. Uh, remember that cycles. We need to switch to cycles from the beginning, and we're gonna switch to stretch off. We don't need this guy for now. We have nothing on the 3D scene. I'm gonna have a outliner. Start with a plane and a viewer draw, and yeah, by default. You know it's gen gonna generate a single polygon face it's quad it's a simple and this guy is gonna represent our pixel we're gonna have maybe 100 by 100 or less for for the preview and we're gonna generate more of these so we're gonna use the matrix <coughs> matrix in we can actually use another plane um, and here we're gonna use the position of this uh, plane point to generate our grid let's see uh, oh yeah one more thing I think uh, I, I can plug this in and then we can see the grids being generated increase the step or lift the step but maybe make this a little bit smaller uh, I think I think what I'm going to do is to kind of center out this plane. I'm gonna use vector drop matrix in. So uh, I think it's already centering the the square there. So each grid's gonna place it exactly, and I will also have a scale here. Scale. And vector in, make this a little bit smaller, or you can make it one so it looks like pixel. I'm gonna make it smaller so it's clearer. Um, okay, so we have a bunch of them one, two, three, four, five, uh, 16 of them. And okay, I think that should be good. If we bake it now, we're gonna end up with a uh, 16 objects and we don't want that we don't totally don't want that we just want it to, to be a single object so we can use um, first of all we need to apply the matrix so vector and the matrix transformations that we generated on the fly we apply them so now we should end up with a Sixteen vertices, but I think we are missing something. I need to also mesh join the vertices and the polygon edge. So hopefully we're gonna end up with single single objects. If we are using like a B mesh viewer. Um, actually, before I do that, maybe I need to do the repeat here. 
Um, this repeat. Okay, I think this is more correct. Um, this, the number 16 is really dependent on the number of metrics, so I'm gonna use list length here. Stethoscope should be like 16, so plug into the number. Okay, now no matter how many numbers we, we generated, this should still be um, correct, like a grid wise. Um, actually, maybe I didn't do the grid properly. Now they are like a single join mess. That's not actually not what I want actually that's a uh, it's correct so this is the default um, square and then this is the this is our grid I should have increased the value over here and this is if we want to change the, the gap but we can also change it here okay so we have our um, grid and this is if, if we bake it, it's gonna be a single object. See? Single grid object. And then we we can also now use the viewer B mesh to output our grid. Okay, single object, it's called alpha. We can also call it just grid, you know. And we can delete alpha file save and save as again I'm gonna turn on this F this is color grid this is a starting point um, now the next thing I will do is to decide the number 8 by 8 seems to be a good number it's, we have 64 grid to play with for start um, for the grid itself uh, we know that uh, we have the index so I, I'm, I'm gonna display the index for now it's the index um, I'm gonna get the index from this guy for the C's and face I'm gonna show the the index number of the face so 0 1 2 3 4 we have 64 start from index 0 okay I'm gonna keep that and we are also going to do what we're going to do next is to give a material this is uh, our material and we're going to assign it here as well so it's always going to use that material there is one thing that i actually forgot if you want if you don't want to use this kind of a uh, matrix apply mass join list repeater you can simplify this simply by plugging the matrix into the viewer B mesh. I just remember that. So I guess we should do that. Just let's know this better. So I'm gonna cut this one, two, three, and then with this guy, I make sure I merge it. And then here I will have the vertices and the polygon face and the matrix coming in there so now we have the same same exact thing but a simpler we simply provide the matrix and it's gonna do the copy and duplications for us save again okay with this guy we can have vertices edges face um, We're gonna do use um, objects in again, I think, and just get the our our objects. Plug the polygon and vertices there, and then display it. I think I'm gonna use a uh, maybe white color, but we can use the background as well. Okay, we have our grid 64 
square and we want to give it a color because that's what matters vertex color new and then just plug in our object and we're gonna colorize the face don't worry about photosis and loop uh, we just worry about the face and then yeah I think we are almost ready to go now with our objects you can see the data there's a color data coming in from Spreadshop and with that color data we can use um, we can use it inside cycles so attribute stretch of color plug that in and if we render we have currently we have white because probably we, we haven't done anything with the color let's say if we use should we use random color yet maybe maybe if we use a single color vector in plug in maybe give it a red color and we render it again we have red we have red all over because um, vertex color new kind of doing uh, the repeat repetitions it's giving that single color for all of them if we give give it red and green we have yellow if we uh, give it a uh, red green and blue we have white if we get rid of the green we have uh, magenta so this is uh, the start of our color explorations I don't know if my next 100 live nodings will be just all about generating procedural textures I don't know yet but this is one area that I'll, I always come back to and I think I have I have interest in this um, it's very very interesting so so now we have grid of colors right what can we do with it um, when we start to play around with something we we start simple so I'll show you what we ha we already have um, things like a uh, random um, random vector mk2 will generate like a random vector right apparently the color is RGB and the random vector is XYZ and it's kind of happily take the value and then gonna use it even though sometimes with random vector you have negative value but uh, you will see that this is actually working kind of fine you can generate color maybe our color is a bit dark because I'm using this uh, color management there we go like I said sometimes we have negative value that's why it's, uh, we have black but if you use um, absolute math absolute you can kind of uh, make the color to be not to be black okay let me separate the color first and actually use stethoscope just in st uh, if you haven't used the stethoscope node it's very very useful it's give you like a quick preview of the value we can see we have negative value and sometimes it's uh, it's not good for our color so we need to have a way to kind of make the color not to be negative so we can use absolute so we separate the vector random vector into its separate value and then we can use a uh, math here and there's an absolute function here that we can use for the x absolute plug that in get it this guy also and one more so hopefully now if I refresh we get a value that's uh, not black seems like uh, this guy seems to stop working but let me check real quick Instead of rendering, we can also use the vertex pane and then, you know, to check the color. So we can paint our own, but Spreadshop will override the color. Let me check what's going on here. Kind of count 64, see. Oh, okay. I just need to refresh it. Just now it uh, didn't work. So now we have a random color and it never goes um, under zero because it's a 
with absolute it's gonna turn negative into positive so we have this uh, nice random color um, if the index number is distracting we can turn off the background and just have this white color okay file save so this is gonna be our template color grid template color grid um, if you if we actually turn off the gap this guy is almost like a pixel oh actually this guy is kind of resetting itself again we need to reset it there's probably something with my setup that uh, doesn't like maybe remember before that uh, we kind of uh, did something with this uh, mesh creations maybe it was better before because uh, otherwise we need to do this maybe this object needs to be plugged in there right away yeah let's see have a look but, uh, now it's a little bit better because now the, this node is dependent on this node is plugging directly into our next setup and then now we don't have that kind of hiccup cool okay we, we can generate a um, random color yeah and a random color this uh, this random vector is kind of generating list a list of 64 numbers that get assigned into our grid remember that this is still like a list at some point we're not gonna depending on list anymore but we are kind of more working more in a in a vector kind of a space a quick um, example that's using the vector is actually uh, the fractal vector fractal here you actually need to for example it's requiring a vertices, vertices right and for the vertices um, we can tell um, stretch of okay you want the vertices and for the vertices that we need is actually let's say imagine if each polygon have a, like a like a single center points that's gonna be the position of the vertices that we need for this uh, vector fractal so for that we can simply use this uh, this guy just plug into the vertices and then the the output value is a scalar it's a, just a single value but if we plug it in into that guy we're gonna get very interesting looking black and white and what is this let's see let's play around with this you will see that this guy generates uh, some kind of fractal pattern that we are familiar with currently it seems like our grid is too small so we might want to have more grid um, let's say let's make this grid like 20 by 20 so we have 400 400 grid now okay refresh uh, we don't need to see the index for now because we have so many numbers now this guy is fractal and let's play around with this number okay this does have that kind of effect lacunarity okay that's actually kind of scaling the thingy octave uh, more details perhaps more or less detail lacunarity everything is kind of uh, reacting with one another so we can have more or less but remember that we can also scale scale and then do something with our vector so if we use like a vector math and multiply scalar see we can kind of scale out scale in our vector and we're starting to see a pattern interesting pattern like looks almost like a, the mass graph texture so 40 by 40 maybe not um, not so interesting 40 by 40 1600 pixel or even 100 by 100 10,000 pixel okay I recommend you not to go over 10,000 uh, because it's starting to be a little bit slow now you can start to see okay that's how uh, the vector fractal kind of look like there is some kind of uh, interesting thing happening here it's almost like a there's like a center points right there but there's something that we're gonna 
take care later I guess we don't need to worry about that for now but that's a factor fractal um, you can also use um, vector noise vector noise and this guy is also super interesting and this vector noise is also something that's dependent on the vertices position whether it's in 2d or in 3d because this guy is already procedural in itself it already has the recipe so we are we are so lucky we can just use it um, if you are using your own number later on you will see that uh, it's not always that simple you have to think maybe think about the grid and how the number pattern uh, gonna react with each other okay this is this is um, vector noise okay it looks like that because I scale it um, I'll scale it even smaller now we can see some kind of pattern this is the the familiar Perlin noise pattern we can change it to blender blender um, noise pattern we can also use Voronoi see the Voronoi this is just like um, very similar to blenders on uh, procedural texture creations but you are doing it um, using spread chalk and then this is uh, uh, let me s I think this is like kind of like uh, you can work on it more interactively kind of and you have control over each value like I said this is almost like uh, the same thinking if you are designing OSL open shading language but with OSL you design it using code you don't use node but here you are using a uh, node and uh, this is gonna be like a lot of fun um, maybe if you have interest with uh, procedural texture generations this is like uh, the start for it eventually you're gonna be like uh, very uh, familiar with codes and with codes everything can be faster and then you, you do the function everything using code and it's gonna be super super um, interesting that way the, the the nice thing about vector noise is it's it, it can output scalar and vector and then you can really tweak it that way and you can control all the seed parameter whatever yeah so again you have uh, you have uh, the vector fractal node and this is already contained the recipe if you really know if you really want to know what's going on how this vector fractal and vector noise works you can just dig into the code for this uh, node and eventually I recommend you to use a script node one of these script nodes to generate your own nodes or even make um, an actual stretch of nodes it's gonna be super super fun uh, well, before I go too far um, I will also sh tell you that inst so instead of thinking of the number in the in this vector space kind of way remember that you can also think of it in a list kind of way this is a list what I mean list you know if I turn on the number again oh actually we have so many now I'm gonna reduce the number here 10 by 10 100 read to start so see this is 100 square and then for each square you can generate a list for the color um, and each of them gonna be responsible for the RGB so if you give it like a, I'm gonna use something super simple like a let's say if I am using a list I input this input and give it like a four factor plug this in okay that's gonna be the colors first one red second one green third one blue the last one you know whatever color the, the rest seems to be gonna be repeated the pink pink color is the last color if you want to repeat the color you can definitely do that we probably need to make sure the color is correct how it repeats um, it says we have nine so this is that where we start to think more like a computationally 
we have to know also how the stretch of uh, data structure kind of work. So list repeater doesn't work right away. Maybe I forgot something, but I'm gonna think about that later. But anyway, you can make your own list and plug that in, and then you know generate your own pixel value, pixel by pixel, and it's gonna be in the list, and it's you know. It seems to start from the bottom there, 0 to 9, and 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and so on and so on. So you can, okay, you can maybe like create a range, uh, create a range float perhaps. And then this is going to be the RGB, combining the color into RGB again. So range of color, how many, maybe let's make it like, 100 because we have 100 grid from 0 to 1 because um, Blender RGB works in the floating value from 0 to 1 you can kind of okay you, in here using the range float we tell stretch of okay generate a bunch of list of color ranging from 0 to 100 and actually make 100 list of color value ranging from 0 to 1 and we so we have this kind of gradient from the bottom to the top kind of gradient that's uh, if you let out this uh, polygon in a single line this is going to be like a nice grad gradation but if you want a proper gradations perhaps you need to use like a math modulo modulo and then kind of okay every 10 every 10 value repeat it so this guy kind of making a more proper gradient see from black to white it's very very similar to before but it's actually quite different this is not this is with the modulo and this one without the modulo I'll show you Or maybe I'm not doing this properly. Start, stop. Uh, they are somewhat very very similar but if you it's not actually the same but we're gonna kind of uh, study this a little bit better next time um, the next live noting may be kind of a way we want to generate gradient that goes from one color into another color vertically horizontally maybe diagonally um, that's gonna be the next um, yeah, but anyway, this is uh, whatever color you plug it in, gonna react into this guys. Even if you're like, okay, you decided, okay, I want to make like a random number generator. You know, 100 of them. This is gonna be on the for the red. See, you have this kind of pattern already, and you okay. I also want to have one for the green. I'm gonna have one for the blue as well. So we have black and white unless we randomize the seed for each one of them so we have what we have we have this random color being generated on the fly okay so anyway that's the start this is the gonna be the basic um, color grid generator this is gonna be our template for the next tutorial live noting um, if you have any question kind of feedback suggestion just let me know but this grid we're gonna use uh, very often so this is gonna be uh, important Life noting kind of the starter for um, few life noting in the future is I I'm gonna talk about texture generator and all that. Um, uh, please mind be mindful that I'm also still learning this uh, 
procedural texture genera generations. Um, it's a complex and really, really vast kind of subjects. If you actually know more about the theory, please do let me know and then give me a suggestion. Thanks again uh, for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.